I've been exploring using multiple materials in the same print. Here's an example where it's the same material but two different colors. This was another experiment in printing in multiple materials. This is using TPU and a, a PLA. Matthew over at Design, Prototype, and Test does a good job of identifying many of the mechanical issues with this mechanism and has a good video about how he went about solving uh, several of those. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. I have several projects I have planned uh, that rely on catches. Uh, so I've been looking at compliant mechanisms, uh, particularly by stable compliant mechanisms that I can embed in these projects. An attractive feature of bistability is that energy input is only needed to transform between those states, but not to maintain the state. I've printed many compliant mechanisms through the years, uh, like this bag clip. Um, I've always struggled with the fatigue of the material or them just getting weak over time, um, primarily because I'm using a not so great material for that, which is a PLA or PETG. So I've been experimenting with ways to uh, solve that problem and I've been using uh, this by material printing. As I've been working on these, I've found that they're very prone to break at the interface points. I found this paper that describes uh, this by stable uh, mechanism. Now I was playing with this long before I realized that there was actual paper on this. And then I started reading the paper and I found uh, they struggled with the exact same thing in their implementation. And they actually found, uh, got a lot of variance in their testings because of those failure points. I've been printing these out and testing them and looking at the failure points and then trying to identify the best way to solve uh, that failure. Um, one of the original versions I just had very simple, just a little bit of uh, flexible material right at the pivot point and butted right up into the uh, rigid material and that failed very quickly. So this is my next iteration on this design, if I remove the rigid part here. I actually had the flexible material pass all the way through uh, to almost like one solid piece. You have these connections that pass through the rigid material uh, to hold it together. Turn the rigid layer back on. And here you can see I wrapped those Von Mises truss in uh, rigid material uh, and there's uh, the flexible inside of them. And here you can see that the flexible material goes all the way through. If I go to a cross-sectional area here so we can see uh, that channel. So there you can see that the uh, flexible material passes right through, all the way through uh, the rigid material. So we'll turn all the layers back on so we can do an export. Matthew over at Design Prototype and Test recently asked me how I was able to make uh, my model at things interactive like I did. So I'm going to show you the trick here. Um, the trick is you want to export a step, which I am a believer that anybody doing open design should be uh, providing the step files so it makes it easier for the next person to iterate on the design and make it better, just like Michael did on my previous design. So here we're exporting a step. Um, we want to export as a single step file, but as you saw in the previous part of the video, um, each part is in its own layer. Uh, so things will pick up on that, because um, step will cont contain those layers and make it so we can break out at each layer point. So here we pick our step file and our two STL files. Uh, the two STL one is for the rigid and one is for the flexible, and the step file contains the rigid and flexible layers in there as well. Um, we want to tell things this is a multi-part, uh, treat this as a multi-part step file, and that way it'll assemble it. And then we just enter a bunch of file information for each and every file. It gets a little repetitive here, but um, you just enter some information to help somebody who's looking at this in the future understand what it's for and what they should use, what kind of material they should use to print it. And there we go. Uh, we clicked Upload, and now we can go in and view our file that we just uploaded. And there it is. And because we uploaded it this way, if you hover over the rigid, the, that part becomes yellow. And if you hover over the flex, that becomes part. And if you move this explode lever, it will um, explode the part. Now, you'll notice that there's a whole lot of parts. We had two layers, but there's a whole lot of parts that it explodes into. 
And that's because each of our folders actually had a whole bunch of parts. And in this case, I want to keep them separate um, so I can go back and edit it easier. But here's what I'm going to show you. So this is the flexible part in things. And here's the flexible part in Shaper 3D. And here you can see all of the components that make up that part um, in Shaper 3D. I could select all these, click the union button, and make it into one part, and then upload this in there. And then when I click, click explode, it would be the rigid, and it would be the, the flexible parts, uh, just two parts in the explode. But for me, I need it separated to make my workflow easier. So here, this is uh, what the print would look like on the printer. Um, you can see the white is the rigid part, and the black is the TPU. And it prints those up. And there we go. This is our part after it came off the printer. As we saw, it's hard to see here, but the TPU actually passes right through this uh, PLA part here. And it makes a really satisfying snap in its current configuration when you close it. Now this one's pretty stiff. Um, I might play with those Van, no uh, Van Mies trusses. Uh, make them a little longer or shorter to change how much pressure it is based on the part I want to use. I'm going to use this a lot more and see if I can get it to break and if I need yet another iteration. But the thing's up, the part's up in things, so have a go at it if you have a way that you think you can make it better. <laughs>